What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Summer Career Mode. This is episode number 24. We're starting to see some stuff on the back of our win over Palermo to keep us top of the table. Now five points clear at the halfway stage right now. Aiming to lead this league for the second half of the season as well. And unlike last year not bottle it. So heading into the game uh, on the back of our win over Palermo, which of course saw Profundi score that lovely scorpion kick goal. We saw Wolfsburg put a bid in there for our attacking midfielder. Clearly seeing that goal and think we wouldn't mind seeing that ourselves at the Volkswagen Arena, but of course he's going nowhere and staying right here at the Stadio Giuseppe Sinigaglia. Second half of the season begins and we begin with Genoa at home and heading into this game on a nice unbeaten streak. Five points clear. It always seems to be these games, doesn't it? Like It always seems to be these games where your unbeaten run comes to an end. I have talked about this before, man. Like, I mean, there was such a massive debate in the FIFA CM scene for, for quite a while. You know, handicap scripting momentum. These three words. Which one do you believe in? And if so, why and why not? And I used to say, like, for me, momentum, I think, definitely exists, and I think it should exist. Momentum is a real thing in team sport, individual sport, in life, if you want to get technical as well. Momentum is a uh, is a real thing. I think it should exist, and I think it does exist. But I never used to believe in handicap. Like, I, I, I never used to believe in handicap. Scripting, I don't see how the game can have scripting when, you know, it's in, in eSports. I just don't see how that could be legal, really, more than anything. But handicap, I never used to believe in it until the past two or three FIFAs where this sort of thing does seem to happen a lot. I mean, Genoa at home, newly promoted to the Serie A, heading into the game, it, sh it, it should have been, it should have been a bit of a banker, really, all things considered, but instead lost it by two goals to one, had some golden chances, he had the woodwork, and it's a great one-on-one, -on -one, and in the end came up short with a 2-1 loss. It always seems to seem that the games where you have that slip up in, you've gone on that massive unbeaten run, it always seems to be a game which you expect to win comfortably. It's not your tough ties away against Juventus, it's not your tough ties away against AC Milano or Napoli. No, it's it's Genoa at home, it's Empoli at home, it's Frozenone at home, do you know what I mean? I have to talk about Serie A here. It, it's, it's always the games where you expect to win comfortably, those are the ones where you slip up in. You know, you can dominate away against Inter and score three goals in the first half, but you know, try and beat Frozen only at home, and that becomes a really tricky test for you. I'll never forget in my uh, RTG career with Malaga earlier this year, we were on this like really good unbeaten run in uh, in the Segunda Division, and it was taking on Andorra, who were like rock bottom, you know, with like one win all season long, and I got played off the park, and it's like, right, like that just doesn't seem to make sense to me without there being any kind of handicap. Now I'm not. I'm not saying that these results don't happen from time to time. I think if we talk about, um, I mean, the title of today's episode is Capitulation. So I want to talk about this very briefly. Uh, but, uh, you know, we talk about, uh, for example, when Liverpool were going for that unbeaten season in the Premier League on their way to their first ever Premier League title. And, um, you know, of course, they lost 3-0 away against Watford. And that was the season when Watford, of course, went down to the Championship. You know, it can happen. Like, I'm not saying it never happens. It can happen. But, but it is, you know, normally a lot rarer, you know, for it to happen. But definitely now in FIFA, I see it a lot. And I feel it a lot because I play the game a lot. And there's no doubt about it for me. When I'm on an unbeaten run, I never fear Juventus away. I never fear Napoli away. But frozen only at home and I'm absolutely bricking it. Do you know what I mean? So not a surprise my undefeated run came to an end there. Thankfully, did bounce back in the following game where against Empoli with a 4-1 victory there. And then following that, a bid for Marchetti. Uh, turned down Liverpool, putting in the bid. Turned it down. I need to sell someone because I need to extend Spinozola's contract. But I don't have any money in the bank right now. So I've got to sell someone as Profundi goes for an audacious halfway line volley goal. I went quite close there. But uh, it's not going to be Marchetti, as he's one of my best youngsters. But anyway, yeah, following game, uh, taking on Palermo. What a fall from grace Dave had. But heading into the game here, 17 minutes to go. I was deadlocked at 0-0. Couldn't find that breakthrough. I was really, really struggling. And then the reason why today's episode is tied to capitulation is because of what you're about to see. Palermo had done an amazing job at keeping me out of their area. For the first 70 minutes. And then once Dragovic broke the deadlock here. Drew first blood finally. And surely insured. 
that we would get those much needed three points to get to the side right now. Bottom of the table with just a one win on the board. Well, when you talk about a capitulation, this is one of the worst I've seen, at least in FIFA 23. So 0-0, soon became 2-0. First drag, which then from kickoff, Palermo surrendered possession. Colombo goes up the other end, makes it 2, and that would wrap it up there. Palermo's heads drop. They totally capitulate. And from tied at 0-0, on the way to claiming an amazing, incredible point. It could kickstart the second half of the season. They're now 2-0 down. And you think that was bad? Goodness gracious me. Well, thanks to that ball, mate. Colombo says, all right, I'll take that one then. Passes straight to my number 9. Just storms down the right. Bataro basically leaves him alone. And as he offloads into the middle, in both plays it into the centre and Dragic gets his second and Palermo literally in the space of a few real time seconds go from tied at 0-0 to 3-0 down. When you talk about capitulation that's one of the worst you will ever see. Six in-game minutes but really about what 30 seconds of real time? They went from tied at 0-0 to 3-0 down and it really begs the question you know capitulation what's the worst you've ever seen? Not in FIFA, but in, in real life football. Now, of course, I think the, the one that we all kind of think of first in our mind is surely probably Brazil versus Germany 2014 World Cup semi finals. I don't think I've ever seen capitulation worse than that before or after. It really was one of the worst we've ever seen. Brazil on home soil. World Cup in Brazil, it was a, a fantastic World Cup all round, but the, oh my goodness, the, the throwaway from Brazil, who, if, if we remember correctly back then, they were one of the favourites, if not the favourite, to win that World Cup, if you remember, uh, it was uh, Argentina, of course, who, uh, who lost the final uh, to Germany, of course. Uh, of course, they won the World Cup good to score an extra time winner. But if you remember, Brazil being on home turf, they were considered one of the favourites to go and win this um, on, on home soil. And they went to that semi-final. And, and yes, they had a suspension. I can't remember who was suspended for the game. I think it was, was it Neymar or... or no, it's, no, sorry, it was Thiago, of course, it was Thiago Silva. Was it, was it Thiago? Yeah, it was Thiago, I think it was Thiago Silva that was suspended. Um, I don't know if you got a red card in the previous round. I can't remember, but he was he was suspended for the game, which meant they're already going to be a little bit fragile at the back. And I do remember Neymar was out for the game. I don't think he was suspended. I think it was injury. So they were missing both Thiago Silva and Neymar, like two of their big leaders in the team, but mainly Silva at the back. And uh, I remember literally in the first, I want to say first 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes, they were down 5-0 and I remember literally like as soon as they went I think, it was, I think it was two goals up they then conceded a third and fourth literally directly afterwards I think it was uh I think it was again between like minutes 15 to 20 or 22 or 23 or something like that they conceded like four goals just like that it was unbelievable it was literally like, as soon as they kicked off Germany found themselves through and finished past back then in goal for Brazil. I don't know who it was, to be fair. But they, they, they finished quite comfortably each time, each single time. And I just remember David Luiz literally looking more lost than me on a night out. I mean, it was really, really embarrassing. It was one of the worst bits of capitulation I'd ever seen. When they went 2-0 down... They were still in the game. It was so early doors. Again, it would have been about 15 minutes in, something like that. But it was still early doors. It was definitely in the first half an hour. It was still early doors. They were 2-0 they were down. And there's no reason you can't come back from 2-0. I mean, we, we all get those memes. But it is kind of true. You know, 2-0 at times can be the most dangerous lead to have. So they were still in the game. They were still on the home turf. And out of nowhere, Germany added like another three goals in the space of like... I don't know, five minutes? It was ludicrous. Such a massive uh, capitulation um, from from Brazil. And probably the worst I've ever seen. But then there's been some others as well. I remember, um, I mean, if you want, you could probably say actually the 1999 Champions League final. Now, I'm going back a bit here, and some of you guys probably weren't born for this, but the 1999 Champions League final, I'm sure you recognise, because you'll probably remember that was the year when Manchester United won the treble, and that 1999 Champions League final, it's regarded as one of the uh, the best comebacks in Champions League final history. Not the best, in my opinion. That was broken a few years later by Liverpool, because that's another great sign of capitulation. Now, AC Milan were freeing it up at half-time in Istanbul, and then Liverpool scored three second-half goals. 
And of course, won it on penalties. Milan basically had the Champions League in the bag at that point at half time and then capitulated completely, conceded three goals in the second half and Newell went on to win the shootout. Unbelievable. It's a great chat about what uh, Rafa Benitez said in the, uh, in the half time team talk um, for, uh, for, for that, uh, that Champions League final. Steven Gerrard, Jamie Carragher, uh, they, they both talked about it. Um, it was more a case of like sort of just stemming the flow, if you will, as opposed to coming back from 3 0 down. But trust the process, eventually they managed to do that as well. But the 99 Champions League final as well, Bayern Munich were 1 0 up on Manchester United. Um, heading into the final few minutes and it seemed as though the job was done and it was going to be Bayern Munich's Champions League final and Champions League won in Barcelona and then of course they conceded two corners and conceded two goals literally first Teddy Sheringham and then Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, scored the, uh, the winner for Manchester United and from a goal up with literally seconds to go they lost the final 2-1 you could say uh, Liverpool obviously coming back from uh, from Barcelona was it, was it 3-0 uh, at the new Camp a few years ago 3-0 up Barcelona and of course Liverpool won the uh, the second leg obviously everyone remembers that uh, the quick corner taken by Trent and Di Rockerigi of course scoring the goal that sort of wrote himself into Liverpool folklore uh, if you will major capitulation there from Barcelona but they themselves not long before that of course had their own kind of uh, epic comeback against Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League when they had that extraordinary turnaround in the uh, in the second leg at the new camp as well so capitulation it's um it's it's one of those uh, it's it's one of those things where I think it's more of a mental thing than anything else. I mean, you know, how how can you possibly say that PSG from 4-0 up in the first leg would throw that away and lose the second leg, what would have been, I think, 6-1? I remember they scored two goals. Or was it three goals in stoppage time Barcelona scored? Unbelievable. But the point I'm trying to make is that, that capitulation, that's more of a mental thing. That's more of a mental stumbling block, you know. And I know sometimes I go on about this, and I'm, I'm sure I sound as though I'm uh, being an armchair psychologist, but I really do feel as though that is where, you know, to me, the psychology of sports and team sport and individual sport as well just absolutely fascinates me because PSG, now this is of course back before Kylian Mbappe, but it was, it was still a star-studded Paris Saint-Germain team. You would have still had Thiago Silva, uh, I think Marco Verratti would have been there at the time, Cavani. I mean, regardless, it was, it was an amazing team, absolutely amazing team. And to, to go and lose to a Barcelona side, who, who, to be fair, you know, would have had Suarez, Messi and Neymar, you know, the MSN. Uh, you, you still would have had Iniesta back then as well. PK in his prime too. It's an amazing team, don't get me wrong. It's not beyond the possibility for a team to, you know, overcome that deficit. But it is unlikely, and especially when you consider, again, I think it was two or three goals were scored in stoppage time. You know, that to me is more of a mental thing. And that's when you need those strong characters and those strong leaders to kind of shepherd and guide you through the storm because if we take what we were talking about in the last episode for example like and we follow on from that you know I was talking a lot about tough times this too shall pass etc etc and when you're going through the uh the shit if you will and, and life is very very hard um, you know, you, you kind of need that strong will to see yourself through. Yes, this is tough. Yes, we're under the cosh right now. Yes, we're in the trenches and getting shot at. But we need to keep our heads up. We need to get through this, you know. And I think those are the moments there which they always fascinate me in team sport. You look at the you look at the players on the pitch and say to yourself, right, who's leading this scenario right now? Who who is taking charge of this? Who's taking the reins and saying, okay, we're under the cosh. We're in trouble. We're going to make sure we remain somewhat positive to see ourselves through this and not totally capitulate. It's always fascinating when a team does and you look around and you say, which player should have been the leader in that moment right there? But anyway, despite losing our unbeaten run to Genoa, we managed to bounce back, go on a streak with a couple of wins and then, of course, lose to Frozenoni in the cup. But again... Key, not capitulating. Bouncing straight back from that embarrassing loss there. Yeah, knocked out of the cup by Frozen Only. How do we respond? Will we win our next in a row? Yep, great, great little streak here, including that win against Cagliari. I had to show you that final highlight. That I was so close, man. I was so close to scoring my first halfway line goal since you were 24. It wouldn't have been as good, of course, because the goalkeeper was way out of his line. He came through for a corner. Uh, Ranieri sent him up for the, uh, for the final attack of the game. And, uh, oh, man. 
I had a golden chance and I just blew it. I got, I got the power, right? I got the power, right? But I just didn't get the direction right there. Keep running back to his line. Caleb Acoli going for goal just outside the halfway line. Now, I, man, I regretted that so bad. I was so close, so, so close. Just didn't get, didn't get the direction right. But anyway, instead of capitulating, knowing a few losses on the trot. And like last season where I bottled the title, losing two of the final three and ended up finishing in third place in this area. This season, things are different. We are not capitulating. We're not feeling sorry for ourselves. We're bouncing straight back. Final game of today's episode in Tuscany, in Florence, taking on Fiorentina. Aim to keep our little win run going going in the Serie A and extend it to six heading into the game where we were tuning up in the second half. Luca Warwick, Coleosha still part of our team, doesn't play often but still part of our team, makes it 2-0 and then with 17 minutes to go here and Bolo flicks on to Alberto Villa nice ball back to Briel, quick little cut back to Coleosha and this would wrap it up. 3-0 final score in Florence and again unlike last season where I absolutely bottled it losing two of my final three games I am not prepared to let it happen again yes our unbeaten run was ended by Genoa in disappointing fashion at home. Yes, we've been knocked out of the cup very early by Frozenoni at home. Two really poor results, but we ain't going to capitulate. Good lesson there for life as well. Just because you have an embarrassing loss, you're an embarrassing setback, a difficult moment, you don't need to let it become out of hand. You can bounce straight back. Have we done that? Well, despite losing the unbeaten run, we extended the five-point gap to eight from last year's champions, AC Milano. 12 games to go. We ain't going to capitulate, and I'm not going to bottle it like last season. But that will end this episode of the Summer Crew, guys. So big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you had then please do drop a like. So you'll have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of the Summer Crew mode very soon.